On July 29, 1998, a fax was sent into a late-night paranormal-themed radio show called Coast to Coast AM. The host, Art Bell, read it live on air. Here is a condensed version of what he read. Quote, Dear Art, I had to fax when I heard other time travelers calling in from any time past the year 2500 AD. Please, let me explain. Time travel was invented in 2034. Offshoots of certain successful fusion reactor research allowed scientists at CERN to produce the world's first contained singularity engine. The basic design involves rotating singularities inside a magnetic field. By altering the speed and direction of rotation, you can travel both forward and backward in time. Interestingly, when you travel in time, you must compensate for the orbit of the Earth. Since the time machine doesn't move, you have to adjust the engines so you remain on the planet when you turn it off. Unfortunately, it was also discovered that anyone going forward in time from my 2036 hit a brick wall in the year 2564. Art, the reason I'm here now is because I believe a nuclear weapon set off by Iraq in the Middle East war with Israel might have something to do with the damaged timeline. I will test the theory and get back to you. Please pray that we discover the reason why there is no apparent future after 2564. End of quote. Are you ready to jump down the rabbit hole? On November 2nd in 2000, a post went up in the Time Travel Institute forums by a user using the handle TimeTravel underscore zero. The poster claimed to be an American soldier from the year 2036 who had traveled back to 1975 in order to retrieve an IBM 5100, one of the first portable computers. But why would someone from the year 2036 need a computer from 1975? Then there was a pesky narrative of the United States of America having a second civil war. The name John Teeter was first introduced in January 2001 when Time Travel Zero began posting at the Art Bell BBS forums. This forum required a name or pseudonym for every account. In these faxes and posts, John talked about or answered questions, sometimes in great length, about why he was sent back to 1975, how his time machine worked, how time travel works, why the USA was embroiled in the Second Civil War, the branch of military he belonged to, and the difference between his world and ours, plus much, much more. In this episode, we will try and answer four questions. Number one, why was John sent back to 1975? Number two, how did John time travel? Number three, what caused the U.S.'s Second Civil War? Number four, is this real? Why was John sent back to 1975? According to John Teeter's own post, he was an American military man based in Tampa, Florida, working for the government as part of a time travel initiative. When John was asked why he needed to time travel to 1975 on an online forum, he answered the question by saying, quote, I was sent to get an IBM computer system called the 5100. It was one of the first portable computers made. And it has the ability to read older IBM programming language in addition to APL and BASIC. We need the system to, quote, debug various legacy computer programs in 2036. Unix has a problem in 2038. On my world line, it is known that the 5100 series is capable of reading all the IBM code written before the widespread use of APL and BASIC. Unfortunately, there are none left that anyone can find on my world line. End of quote. At first, this may seem a little crazy, but the logic here has been done before. In 2002, NASA needed to get their hands on obsolete Intel 8086 chips for their booster testing machines. So NASA naturally headed to eBay to buy outdated medical equipment that had these chips in them. Here's another part that makes John Teeter's claim seem to be true. 
The ability to read older IBM programming languages was not publicly known. IBM was worried what other companies might do with this knowledge, so they told no one. And yet, somehow, John knew. How did John time travel? The facts from 1998 mention that CERN had a breakthrough that allowed scientists to create what John called the world's first singularity engine, which I would assume is an engine that can somehow contain a small black hole. John went on to explain that, quote, time itself can be understood in terms of connected lines. When you go back in time, you travel on your original timeline. When you turn your singularity engine off, a new timeline is created. Due to the fact that you and your time machine are now there, in other words, a new universe is created. What John was saying was that his time traveling didn't affect his own timeline. Instead, any changes he made would create a new timeline and affect only the new one. John's future would remain the same. When asked how his time machine worked, John answered by saying, quote, My time machine is a stationary mass temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two top-spin dual-positive singularities that produce a standard offset Tipler sinusoid, end of quote. He would later add these details. Two magnetic housing units for the dual micro-singularities, an electron injection manifold to alter mass and gravity of the micro-singularities, a cooling and x-ray venting system, gravity sensors or a variable gravity lock, four main cesium clocks, three main computer units. He called it his C204 time displacement unit and said he had originally had it attached to a 1968 Corvette, but later switched to a 1987 pickup truck because the vet was, quote, impractical and that he needed four-wheel drive. He never explained why four-wheel drive was a better option. John also mentioned in a post once that, quote, For all you interested in coming back with me to 2036, perhaps we should discuss the trip. Please be aware the displacement unit moves through time, not space. It can also get quite hot and stuffy during the trip, and you'll be subjected to 1.5 to 2G force the entire time. You'll also need some sort of rebreather system or oxygen supply. What caused the USA's second civil war? John talks at length as to what caused unrest and war in his timeline. Here is an excerpt from one of his posts online. Quote, Real disruptions in world events begin with the destabilization of the West as a result of degrading U.S. foreign policy and consistency. This becomes apparent around 2004 as civil unrest develops near the next presidential election. He says the Civil War started in 2005 and lasts a whole 10 years. It was caused by border clashes and overpopulation. In 2015, Russia launches a nuclear attack against the United States, the European Union, and China. The U.S. counterattacked with their own nuclear arsenal, and this Third World War killed nearly 3 billion people. His world in 2036, needless to say, is very different than ours. As far as the landscape of the United States, John had this to say, After the war, the United States had split into five separate regions based on the various factors and military objectives they each had. There was a great deal of anger directed towards the federal government, and a revival of states' rights was becoming paramount. He goes on to say that politics is also quite different in his time. He says that the Constitution was changed after the war, They had five presidents that are voted in and out on different term periods. Another difference is that the vice president is the president of the Senate. Is this real? This question is a little bit harder to get an answer to, simply because of the way John described time travel. By laying the groundwork that he was on a different timeline than ours, none of the events that happened on his timeline were guaranteed to happen on our timeline. We know that the big-ticket items that affected his world have not happened to us. That doesn't mean that he was wrong. What we do know is that in 2009, a report by John Houston, who runs the Hoax Hunter website, named Larry Haber, 
a Florida entertainment lawyer, and Maury Haber, his computer scientist brother, as the men behind John Tidor. Larry Huber, it turns out, is the CEO of the mysterious nonprofit John Teeter Foundation that has a website, but no physical address. But given the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey nature of time travel, according to Teeter, even this can be explained away. If John had befriended Larry and Maury while he was on our timeline, and by proxy asked them to disseminate the information for him, well, as you can see, it is possible. I, for one, am not 100% convinced that Larry and Maury are behind John Teeter, nor am I convinced that we were not visited by someone from the year 2036. I'll leave you today with a portion of John's final post online. Quote, My parting thought revolves around something JC has been harping on since day one. No, I do not have a secret agenda, but I have been paying a great deal of attention to your world line. My interaction with you was not a direct mission parameter, but it was a secondary mission protocol based on standing orders given to all temporal drivers. That secondary objective is basically to gather as much information about a world line based on a set of observable variables when we first arrive. Your world line met those conditions. What amazes me is why no one here wonders why Y2K didn't hit them at all. Bring a gas can with you when the car dies on the side of the road. Farewell, John. For more information and to get some links to articles, pictures, and videos regarding this story, please visit cloudedmysteries.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Clouded Podcast and like our Facebook page. Please give us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Victor, and this has been another episode of Clouded where internet meets mystery. In the kingdom of Nile, from each of the Rockies, dial 1, 800 west of the Rockies, including Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, 1-800-618-8255. Well, all right. Uh, that's it. We will continue... To take time calls, time traveler calls tonight at area code 702-727-1295. Dear, I had to fax when I heard other time travelers calling in from any time past the year 2500 A.D. Please let me explain. Time travel was invented in 2034. Offshoots of certain Successful fusion reactor research allowed scientists at CERN to produce the world's first contained singularity engine. The basic design involves rotating singularities inside a magnetic field. By altering the speed and direction of rotation, you can travel both forward and backward in time. Time itself can be understood in terms of connected lines. When you go back in time, you travel on your original timeline. When you turn the singularity engine off, a new timeline is created due to the fact that you and your time machine are now there. In other words, a new universe is created. To get back to your original line, you must travel a split second farther back and immediately throw the engine into forward without turning it off. Some interesting outcomes of this are... One, you meet yourself. I have done it often, even taken a younger version of myself along for a few rides before returning myself to the new timeline and going back to mine. Two, you can alter history in the new universe that you have just created. Most of the time, the changes are subtle. Sometimes I'll notice car models that don't exist or books that come out late. The oldest one was a skyscraper that wasn't built in a near-favorite store of mine in New York. Interestingly, when you travel in time, you must compensate for the orbit of the Earth. Since the time machine doesn't move, you have to adjust the engine so you remain on the planet when you turn it off. Unfortunately, it was also discovered that anyone going forward in time from my 2036 
hit a brick wall in the year 2564. Everyone who has ever been there has reported, has reported that nothing exists. When the machine is turned off, you find yourself surrounded by blackness and silence. Now, most time travelers are trying to find out where the line went bad by going into the past, creating a new universe, and proceeding forward to see if the same thing results in 2564. It appears the line went bad around the year 2000. I'm here now, in this time, to test a few theories of mine to go before going forward. Now, for the future... You might want to know about one, Y2K is a disaster. Many people die on the highways when they freeze to death trying to get to warmer weather. Two, the government tries to keep power by instituting martial law, but all of it collapses when their efforts to bring the power back up fail. Three, a power facility in Denver is able to restart itself but is mobbed by hundreds of thousands of people and destroyed. This convinces most that maybe we shouldn't bring the old system back up. Four, a few years later, communal government system is developed after the Constitution takes a few twists. China retakes Taiwan. Israel wins the largest battle for their life, and Russia is covered in nuclear snow from their collapsed reactors. Art, the reason I'm here now is because I believe a nuclear weapon set off by Iraq in the Middle East war with Israel might have something to do with the damaged timeline. I will test that theory and get back to you. Please pray that we discover the reason why there is no apparent future after 2564. So I couldn't resist. I thought that was quite a good fax. There you have it. You're on the air. Hello? 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 H